Today we're looking at the Air Avionics ACD57. The Air Avionics display is a 57mm unit which can control your radio, your transponder and can also act as an altimeter. Let's take a look at what's inside the box. So at the top we've got the coupon code for activating the channel database. That allows you to see the nearest station frequencies. Then we've got a Form 1 for the ACD57. So this is a certified device, certified unit. It needs a Form 1. We've got the pilot's operation manual. And we've got the installation manual. On this side, we've also got four mounting screws. We've got an SD card and SD card adapter. That's for loading the station channels. We've also got a couple of locking lugs. This is to screw into the back of the device and allows you to lock the plug-in. And then lastly, we've got the unit itself. First, we'll take the screen protector off the display. Looking at the front of the ACD57, we've got four push buttons along the top. Then at the bottom, we've got two rotary switches. We've got a larger one, which rotates, smaller one on top, which can rotate and push in to select an option. Then going up the right hand side, we've got a slot for a micro SD card. And then at the bottom, we've got a status light. Not much to look at on the sides. Going around the back, we've got two 15 pin high density plugs. And these are for connecting to other devices such as a radio, a transponder, or another ACD display. And that's the static port. If you're planning to use this as an altimeter, you'll need to connect it to a static source and that plugs into here. And that's kind of it. Let's take a look at what it can do. And here we are with the ACD in the panel. You may notice we've also got the LX9070 and V8 here in the panel as well. We've got another video about that. So check out our YouTube channel to uh, find out more about that. All I've done with the ACD so far is I've connected it to power. It's immediately booted up and showed this display. To set it up, we need to push down the rotary switch and then we immediately go into setup. To navigate this display, we rotate the small rotary switch and we can scroll through the options. If you have no options enabled on this device, then you can use it as a transponder controller. This can control a VT01 transponder and Air Avionics are working on a new type of transponder which will come out in the next few years and that will be compatible with this display. The other really useful thing about the ACD57 is that you can use it to control your radio. If you've got a Becker, a KRT2 or an Aircom radio, this unit can control it all within the 57mm head. You'll need to purchase a radio license if you've got a Becker or a KRT2 radio. If you're buying the Aircom from Air Avionics, then you don't need a license. If you're using it with a Becker or KRT2 radio, you'll need the appropriate harness to connect it to the ACD57. If you're using it with the Aircom radio, you can mount the Aircom radio on, directly onto the back of the unit, or you can mount the Aircom radio remotely and have a, the appropriate cable running to the ACD57 control head. Lastly, the ACD57 can also perform as an altimeter. Uh, again, that's an option that will need to be purchased, and that is simply a license code which you need to input on the lower screen. So to load a license code, you need to firstly go to pin code at the bottom here and select that. The code is 3000. And this now initiates the setup mode. You can scroll to the bottom and select licenses and then install. Here you put your setup code and that will activate that feature. We're going to leave this page and we're going to quickly run through the setup to show you the various options available. So going to the top, we've got a device option. In here you can see various information and the status of the device. Illumination override, if you're using this device in a powered aircraft and you're connecting it to a lighting bus, you would need to set this up here and insulation, 
where there's a few more options for configuration. If you're using the device as a certified altimeter, then you'll need to have two completely redundant power sources. That means you need to have two independent power switches, power circuit breakers, and preferably two independent power sources such as batteries. And scrolling down the options, you can set various altimeter options such as the units. Com control is where you set up the radio type. Com system is where you set up the radio gain and other parameters. Transponder control again is where you set up the transponder type. Transponder system is where you set up the transponder parameters for the aircraft. Failures is where you can see whether there are any error codes. And we're back down to pin code. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like with all of the options loaded. And by the power of Dorian's video editing, we've now got two licenses loaded. At the top on this one, we've got the radio display. We've got the active frequency and then the standby frequency in blue. In the bottom left, we've got the altimeter display. And in blue, we've got the millibar setting. And then in the bottom right, we've got the transponder display. To change the radio frequency, we press the channel button and then the small rotary switch changes the small numbers. The big rotary switch changes the big numbers. Once we're happy with the frequency, we press the rotary switch in and that selects the frequency and it loads in the standby. To change from the standby to the active, we press the middle rotary switch. To change the radio volume, you just turn the small rotary switch. If you turn the small one, you're affecting the active channel volume. And if you turn the big one, you're affecting the standby channel volume. So you can have dual watch and you can control both radio volumes. To set the altimeter subscale, we press Barrow on the top right. And then we can set the millibar setting. The small rotary switch changes the small numbers. The big rotary switch changes the big numbers. Once we're happy with the setting, we press select. And finally, we've got the transponder setting. For that, we press the transponder button. And then on this one, the small rotary switch changes the number. The large rotary switch moves the cursor position. Once we're happy with the setting, we press the select button. Next, we're going to show you how the control bridge works from LXNAV. I've turned on the LX9070 and the V8 is up and running. And we've got the two, we've got the LX9070 and the ACD57 connected up via the control bridge. What that means is I can now control all of the radio functionality, the transponder functionality, and the altimeter from the LX9070. It's a really useful bit of kit, reduces your workload in flight significantly. Just to demonstrate that, if we go to the airport page, and let's say we were getting low just for purpose of this demonstration next to Manchester Airport. The frequency is 121.355, the LX knows that. If we were to press go to and to start navigating to that, it automatically loads it in the standby of the ACD57. And now if we wanted to switch to that frequency, we just press the middle button and now we're talking to Manchester Airport. One of the other benefits of the control bridge is when you first turn the device on and you set the elevation, you're going to set the Q&H setting. That automatically passes through to the ACD57. So that will automatically set your altimeter setting. And finally, with the transponder, we can also control that through the LX9070. We've got the transponder button here. We can set the mode of the transponder, which is up here. And we can set the codes all from the 9070. Quite useful if you've got the ACD57 position lower uh, in a more difficult to reach place in the panel. All of that can also be controlled by the remote stick if you had that with the LX9070. The ACD57 is really good for someone with limited panel space. As you can see, we've got the functionality of a radio, a transponder, and an altimeter all in one 57mm hole. And that frees up a lot of space on the rest of the panel for a big display such as the LX9070. That's the ACD57. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.